Guinea is known for having over a quarter of the global total of bauxite, which is used to make aluminum. With the recent coup d'etat that occurred on September 5th, 2001, Guinea continues to add to its tumultuous political history. While this is a great concern for citizens and international investors, Guinea is still a land flowing of milk and honey beneath your feet. By the end of this video, you'll learn a brief history of, of Guinea and how the Guinean economy has been progressing since independence. Also, I'll share with you some investment opportunities, so definitely keep watching till the very end. Beginning in 900, the Susu people migrated from the north and began settling in the area that is now Guinea. The Susu civilization reached its height in the 13th century. Today, the Susu make up about 20% of Guinea's population from the 16th to the 19th century. The Fulani Empire dominated the region. In 1849, the French claimed it as a protectorate, later rechristening it to French Guinea. Finally, in 1895, it became part of French West Africa. Facing the Atlantic Ocean to the west, Guinea has four geographic regions. First one, the lower region comprising of the coast and coastal plain, which contains lagoons and swamps. The second region to the east, the Futa de Jalon Highlands. The third region, Upper Guinea, which comprises of the Niger Plains. And the fourth region, the forest region, an isolated highland in the southeast. Most of the country has a humid tropical climate and there are extensive tracts of tropical rainforest. The land that is now Guinea belonged to a series of African empires until France colonized it in the 1890s and made it part of French West Africa. Guinea achieved independence on October 2nd, 1958 and became an independent state with Ahmed Sukou Touré as president. Under Touré, the country was the first avowedly Marxist state in Africa. Diplom Diplomatic relations with France were suspended in 1965, with the Soviet Union replacing France as the country's chief source of economic and technical assistance. Guinea is bordered by Guinea-Bissau to the northwest, Senegal to the north, Mali to the northeast, Cote d'Ivoire to the southeast, and Liberia and Sierra Leone to the south. The Atlantic Ocean lies to the west. The country is slightly smaller than Oregon. Three primary energy sources make up the energy mix in Guinea, biomass, oil, and hydropower. With 78% biomass, mostly charcoal, makes the largest contribution in, in primary energy consumption in Guinea. It is locally produced while Guinea imports all petroleum products. Radio is the most important source of information for the public in Guinea and the only one to reach the entire country. There is a single government owned radio network a growing number of private radio stations and one government TV station. Currently, the fixed telephone system is inadequate with just 22,000 lines to serve the country's nearly 13 million inhabitants. However, the mobile cellular system is growing rapidly. Internet usage is very low, reaching just 1.5% of the population in 2012. Guinea is having problems in several areas such as deforestation inadequate potable water access, desertification, soil co contamination and erosion, poor mining practices, and improper waste disposal. There has been a new 450 megawatt Swapiti dam built and operating since June 24, 2021. Guinea's fourth military coup on September 5, 2021 exacerbated national instability when a television broadcast by elite soldiers announced they had captured and detained President Conde and dissolved the Guinean constitution, led by Colonel Mamadi Dumbia, a former officer in the French Foreign Legion. The military junta claims to have acted according, according to the will of the people. Dumbia plans to address endemic corruption, economic mismanagement, and human rights violations through the promise of a transitional government of national unity. Lately, with the increase of aluminum demand, 
for the booming economy of China, there is a renewed interest in Guinea's riches. The Guinea GDP is comprised of 19.5% agriculture, 38.4% industry, and 42.1% services, according to 2017. Major constraints to the economic development of Guinea include weak human capital with low literacy rates, a poor health system, a lack of quality agricultural inputs, weak sector and local government management capacity, limited access to finance, high unemployment, especially among the young people. The government is seeking to become an energy supplier in West Africa while investing in solar and other renewable energy sources to compensate for lost hydroelectric production during Guinea's dry season. The percentage of the population living in poverty is estimated at 55% with a population size of 13 million people. Guinea has an extreme wet season and is prone to flooding that can wipe out entire fields, leaving subsistence farmers with no food for their families. In addition to flooding, Guinea is susceptible to a variety of natural disasters that threaten food security. In the dry season, bushfires can burn through fields and disease outbreaks in the last decade, such as Ebola and COVID-19, prevent many people from obtaining the resources that they need. The ethnic makeup of the country is Fulani, Malinke, Susu, Kapele, Kisi, Toma, and other. Since the 1950s, Guinea has experienced rapid population growth, accompanied by continuing migration from the rural areas to the urban centers. Even so, some three-fifths of the population is still rural. Agriculture and other rural activities account for about three-fourths of the country's employment, with less than one-tenth in industrial employment, including mining. Services make up the remainder of Guinea's economic activity. Low salaries are common, and there is a large informal economy. The shortage of trained personnel is serious, and finances suffer from misappropriation and tax evasion. Many of the processing industries have been held back by inadequate supplies of raw materials. Internal production is not sufficiently high in agriculture particularly, and the shortage of investment capital has been persistent. Guinea's transportation system is largely based upon roads and domestic air service. Roads connect Guinea to regional centers and to Senegal and Mali. An international airport at Conakry serves jets of all sizes. Air Guinea Express operates a somewhat an irregular schedule of weekly domestic flights to the hard surface airports at Cancan, La Bay, and Farana, and maintains occasional service to nearby international cities. The Conakry Cancan railway line is now mostly defunct, and there is no passenger railway service in the country. Two industrial railways serve the bauxite mining areas, including a line leaking Conakry to Freya bauxite mines. The Bokeh Railway runs between Kamsar and Sangaredi. The port facilities of Conakry are extensive. There is a channel of about 60, 25 to 65 deep and dock space with modern loading equipment. The Sangaredi Bauxite Mine Company maintains its own ore exporting port at Kamsar. Coastal shipping, however, is limited. Equipment and supply shortages and an inadequate number of medical personnel continue to hamper the health care system. Most social welfare services are either provided by the extended family or are absent. A severe housing shortage exists in urbanized areas though mud and straw construction reduces the problem in rural areas. It is estimated that one-fifth of the country's population lives in Conakry and its surrounding areas where the housing shortage is especially serious. Top exports of Guinea are gold, aluminum ore, aluminum oxide, non-filet frozen fish, coconuts, Brazil nuts, and cashews, exporting mostly to UAE, China, India, Belgium, and Spain. The top imports of Guinea are rice, redefined petroleum, packaged medicaments, delivery trucks, and cars, imported mostly from China, India, Netherlands, 
Belgium, and UAE. The current currency is the Guinean francs. The corporate tax rate is 35% and the public debt is around 34% of GDP. Many people rely on informal lending services since many don't have bank accounts. As far as promising industries in Guinea, always start with agriculture. That's really all of West Africa, but agriculture and the fishing sectors are definitely industries that have huge potential, especially with the climate of Guinea. Due to land and the water and the climactic conditions, it provides ample opportunity to have large scale irrigated farming and agro industry. Then you have the energy sector. So hydroelectricity, there's a huge potential for it because of the high rainfall in Guinea already and the deep gorges um, that they do have. Uh, you always have the mining sectors that are there as well that offer a lot of opportunities. So if it was up to me and I had to choose an industry for people to invest in or if I'm going to invest in Guinea, I would just start with the agriculture sector get that going and then start looking at industry i'll try to transition to industry in some way that allows for synergy and then once i'm in there i got both of those industries going i'll reinvest in the energy sector because energy is severely lacking especially green energy i will invest in that sector all the way so that's what i will do if if i was going to invest in Guinea. If you're interested in an entrepreneurial opportunity, I have one for you. For African manufacturers, going green may offer products. So I hope this video helped you to better understand what's going on with Guinea, especially with the coup that was going on. I didn't really talk too much about the coup, but uh, apparently it's welcomed by a lot of the residents. So they wanna see change as well. But hopefully this video had allowed you to better understand the economy of Guinea. And if you have any relevant topics that you would like for me to do a video on, then definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Check out this video's description. I do have some helpful sources for you, uh, such as a free ebook on how to be a millionaire in Africa. I definitely have my small business consultation services available to you, and also a course on how you can prepare to start your own business. Now, if you like these videos and you like what you see, then definitely like this video and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to click that bell so that you're alerted when I do drop new videos. Definitely share this video with anyone you think that uh, it will help them. I would greatly appreciate it. So I'll see you in the next video.